Lesson 24. Talking on the phone. Communication. Hello, today we are going to practice pronunciation and we are going to review numbers. Then we will learn how to use the verbs say, tell, and ask. We'll also learn how to take messages on the telephone. But first, let's look at some new vocabulary. Take a look at your screen. There are three kinds of telephones. This is a cellular or mobile telephone. People use these to speak on the phone when they are not at home. Next, this is a cordless phone. Many people have these so they can bring the telephone into different rooms in the house. Next, this is a regular telephone. It has a cord, a receiver, and a dial box. The dial box usually has buttons to push. You push these buttons when you want to dial a telephone number. Next, this is a telephone book. It has many telephone numbers. There's usually one telephone book for a town or city or for a certain area. There are usually many pages of advertisements called the yellow pages. These are for people who are trying to sell something or who are offering a service. Next, this is a telephone booth. They are found outside and in airports, bus stations, and metros. They are also on the streets. Next picture, this is a phone card. It can be used in a phone booth to make telephone calls. Next, this is an answering machine. People leave messages on answering machines. A beep is a sound that is used to tell you when to leave a message. People can make local calls in the same area or long distance calls to a different city or country on a telephone. Next picture, this is an operator. A person who may help you with information on the telephone is called an operator. Picks up the phone. When a person answers a telephone, he or she picks up the phone. Next picture. Hangs up the telephone. When a person is finished speaking, he or she hangs up the telephone. Now let's practice pronouncing some of this new vocabulary. Let's repeat what I say. Sylvia, there is a telephone book on the table. There is a telephone book on the table. Good. Linda, Mamie's cell phone is at her sister's house. Mamie's cell phone is at her sister's house. Right. Alberto, where are the yellow pages in this phone book? That's not difficult. Where are the yellow pages in this phone book? Very good. Now, Sylvia, can you repeat this sentence? Can I buy a phone card here? Can I buy a phone card here? Fine. Linda, you do this one. Tell her to turn her answering machine on. Tell her to turn her answering machine on. Okay. One more, Alberto. This one's for you. May I use your phone to make a long-distance call, please? That's a long one. May I use your phone to make a long distance call, please? Wonderful. Good job, everyone. Pronunciation. Now let's practice pronunciation. When a person speaks on the telephone, he or she must speak slowly and clearly so that the other person will understand. Let's read the following sentences slowly and clearly. Sylvia, you go first. Please take a look at your monitor. Hello, is John there? Okay, good. Now, Alberto? Does John have his cell phone with him? Very good. Linda? I want to leave a message. Great. Alberto? When will John be back? Okay. You can see how important it is to speak slowly on the telephone. Let's practice some more. I will read a sentence. You listen carefully. Then repeat it. 
Okay, Alberto, you go first. The baby put the telephone book in the bath. The baby put the telephone book in the bath. Good. Okay, Sylvia, you try this one. It might be a little difficult. Connie always calls Chris on her cellular phone. Connie always calls Chris on her cellular phone. Good job. All right, Linda. The teacher often talks to Ted on the phone. That's easy. The teacher often talks to Ted on the phone. Very good. Good job, everyone. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. Did he leave a number so I can call him back? The mobile phone is in your parents' bedroom. How many times did the phone ring? I need the phone book. Read and repeat. Let's practice pronunciation one more time. Let's say these sentences slowly and carefully. I want to understand you. Okay, Alberto, you go first. Okay, there are four phone books at Fred's house. There are four phone books at Fred's house. Good. Sylvia? There were ten telephone books in the cupboard. There were ten telephone books in the cupboard. Okay. Linda, you are last again. Um, that's simple. She put the cell phone in her purse. She put the cell phone in her purse. All right, wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Numbers. Now let's review numbers. Take a look at some sentences. There are 11 phone books in my desk. Ted has 16 telephone cards. Jimmy has 12 digits in his telephone number. There must be 2,000 advertisements in these yellow pages. So the numbers in these sentences are pronounced in the normal way. Here's some more sentences. There are 11 phone books in my desk. 11 equals 11. Ted has 16 phone cards. 16 equals 16. When you give a telephone number, each number is read individually and not as a whole. Numbers over 9 shouldn't be used. Okay, here are some examples. Paul's number is 667-4127. So Paul's number is 667-4127. So you read each number individually. You do not say Paul's number is 667 That's just ridiculous. Okay, another example. Taylor's work number is 212 Five four seven nine. So we say Taylor's work number is two one two five four seven nine. So you do not say Taylor's work number is one hundred and twelve five thousand four hundred and seventy nine. Okay, two of the same number can be read as double. For example, Kyle's number is two three four. 8865. Kyle's number is 234 8865. 
Okay, another example. Lana's home number is two two four nine seven double six. Lana's home number is double two four nine seven double six. However, it is better to say each number one by one. Lana's home number is two two four nine seven six six. Yes. Okay. Let's practice numbers now. Alberto, what is your grandfather's telephone number? He has a new number. Okay. I think it is four. Three, two, double O, four nine. Four three two double O four nine. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Alberto. Sylvia, what is your number? My number is double six eight three two four five. Okay. Double six eight three two four five. Mm -hmm. Okay. I thought so. Linda, what is your best friend's number? My best friend is Tina. Her number is four three one seven four zero seven. Okay, four three one seven four zero seven. All right. Thank you, everyone. Now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. There are 412 mobile telephones for sale in that store. Pedro's number is 4129630. That telephone book has 6,100 numbers in it. Her friend's number is 9690011. Read and repeat. Say and tell. Now it's time to learn when to use say and tell. Say and tell. Let's look at some examples. Ellen told Steve to call you. Patty told her mother to call back at four o'clock. If there is an indirect object or a listener, we use tell. Again, look at some sentences. Ellen told Steve to call you. Ellen talked to Steve. Steve was the listener. Patty told her mother to call back at four. Patty talked to her mother. Her mother was the listener. We also use tell in negative sentences when there is a listener. Some more examples. Ellen didn't tell Steve to call you. Patty didn't tell her mother to call back at four. If there is no indirect object or listener, we use say. More examples. Ellen said that Steve should call her. Patty said that her mother should call her at four. In these two sentences, there are no listeners. If there are, we don't know who they are. We can also use say in negative sentences. For example, Ellen didn't say that Steve should call her. Patty didn't say that her mother should call her at four. Using say or tell is easy if you remember two simple rules. Okay, notice that first. If there is an indirect object or listener, use tell. Second, if there is no indirect object or listener, use say. For example, Fred told you to call me, not Fred said me. Next example, 
Mother always says, be quiet to the children, not mother always tells. You can say something to someone. For example, Larry said goodbye to his girlfriend and left the phone booth. Next, what did she say on the phone to the police? In these two sentences, girlfriend and phone are objects of prepositions. They are not indirect objects. In these cases, say must be used. All right, now we're ready to practice say and tell. Hmm, what did your mother say to you before you left today, Linda? Uh, she told me not to forget to buy a new phone card. I have to call my friend in Seville tonight. Good job, Linda. Alberto, what did your mother tell you? Uh, she said that I must uh, remember her new work number. I forgot it yesterday. Uh, it is four, six, no, it's four, three, six, nine, zero, six, five. Okay, that's not too difficult to remember. Sylvia, what did your father say to you? He told me not to lose my cell phone again. I lost one last week. They're expensive. Yes, they are. You should be careful. Thank you very much, everyone. Now I am telling you to look and listen. Look and listen. Kim told his brother to stop talking on the phone. Paul's mother always says that we speak on the phone too often. The operator is telling Adam to call back later. Stephen said he lost his phone cart. Read and repeat. Now let's look at question forms using say and tell. Let's look at some examples. Didn't you say anything to mother about her answering machine? Next, don't we always tell father how much the phone bill is? Okay, let's practice. Let's try negative forms and question forms using say and tell, okay? I will ask Alberto a question. Alberto, after you answer, you ask Linda a question. And then, of course, Linda, you ask Sylvia a question. Okay. Alberto, didn't you tell me to bring the new telephone book to school? Yes, I told you to please bring it. We don't have the new one. Okay, now ask Linda a question. Linda, did you say to your mother that you lost her cell phone? No, I didn't say anything to her. She will be very angry. Sylvia, do you think I should tell my mother? Yes, I think you should tell your mother. Your mother is nice. She will understand. Great. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Now, I say to you, it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. company didn't tell its customers about the new number. Don't tell mother we lost the phone book. She didn't say anything to John after he lost her cell phone. The woman said goodbye and left the phone booth. Read and repeat. Ask. 
Now let's look at ask. Please take a look at some examples. Please ask Jim to speak slowly on the phone. Anne asked for a new cell phone. Ask the man in the phone booth if he is almost finished. Paul didn't ask his brother for the money for the phone bill. We use ask for orders and requests. In the first sentence, the speaker wants John to speak more slowly. In the second sentence, Anne requested a new cell phone. In the third sentence, the speaker wants the man to finish. And in the fourth sentence, Paul didn't request the money from his brother. Okay, now let's practice ask. Let's try asking, excuse me, let's try using ask in our sentences. Sylvia, can I ask you a question? Of course you can. You are the teacher. Okay. Did you buy a new cell telephone yet? No, I didn't ask my mother. She will probably say no. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Why don't you ask Linda a question, Sylvia? Okay. Linda, may I ask for your phone number? Of course you can. You are my friend. My number is 679-5050. Thank you, Linda. Now I can call you when I need help with my homework. <laughs> okay, Linda, please ask Alberto a question. Do you know if the theater has a telephone number? Mm, I asked them for their new numbers, but they gave me the old number. All right, good job, everyone. Now I am asking you to look and listen. Look and listen. Ask Ted if I can use his phone card. Ask your sister to please pick up the phone. Alan asked the operator for his friend's new number. You should ask the operator for information. Read and repeat. Review. All right, now let's review what we've learned. Linda, you will say two sentences using ask. Sylvia, please tell us two sentences using tell. And Alberto, two sentences with say. Okay, are you ready? Yes. yes. Linda, please tell us your sentences. Okay, I asked my brother to hang up the phone, and I always ask my friends to leave a message when they call. All right, very good. Sylvia? Uh, I told my friend to speak louder on the phone. The woman told her boss to call back later. Wonderful. Okay, remember with tell, there must be a listener. Alberto, your sentences? Okay, um, I always say, Leave a message to my friends. The operator said to try the number again. All right, very good. Remember, when you use say, there is no listener. Thank you, everyone. Now, let's learn how to leave a message. Please take a look at some examples. Andy called me an hour ago. I took a message. He said you can call him tomorrow. Next. Your sister called. I took a message but forgot to ask for a number. Are you angry? Okay, many times the person the caller wants to talk to is not home. So if you answer the phone, you should take a message. You should get information from the caller. You should learn the caller's number and the name and when she wants a return call. The caller may also want to know where the person is at the moment. Let's look at this conversation. Listen as you read. Hi, Petra. Is your mother there? 
No, she's not here. She went to the market. Can I take a message? Yes, you can. This is Ellen, isn't it? Yes, this is Ellen. Okay, what's your number, Anne? When should she call you back? I'm at work. She can call me at six four six five three five three. Tell her to call me back in one hour. I will. Thanks for calling. Bye. So we can see that Petra took the caller's name, telephone number, and a good time for her mother to call her back. It is not always important to find out where the caller is. Let's practice. Let's make a phone call and take a message. We will try a role play, okay? So here's your role play. Sylvia, you are calling Alberto. Alberto and Linda, you are studying together. Linda went to the store to buy a new pen and you take a message for Linda. I will start. I will call Alberto now. Okay. Hello. Hello, Alberto. This is Sylvia. What are you doing? Oh, Sylvia. Hi. I am studying. You should study too. I am studying. Is Linda there? Oh, I am sorry. She is not here. She went to the store. She will be back here in 30 minutes. That's bad news. I need to speak with her now. Mm, I can take a message for Linda. Okay. Uh, what's your telephone number? And when can, when can she call you back? Uh, my number is 431-7233. She can call me back in one hour. Okay. I will tell her. Goodbye, Sylvia. Thank you, Alberto. Bye-bye. Very good, very good. And later... Welcome back. I found a great black pen. Did you study? Yes, I did. Sylvia called. She wants you to call her back. Okay. When? Mm, in one hour. Oh, did you take her number? Yes, I did. Thank you. Great job, everyone. Bravo! <laughs> Now, my message is, it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. She always forgets to ask for a time to call back. Your boss took a message for you. You must call your mother in one hour. That wasn't a good message you left on my answering machine. Read and repeat. Listen and write. Now it's time to listen and write. Listen and write the sentences. John told his mother to call a doctor. John said to his mother, please call a doctor. Ask the operator for information. Lyle never asks if he can take a message. I wanted to leave a message, but Al said it wasn't necessary. Please tell Damien to use a phone card next time. Mother didn't say anything to me about a message from Betty. Judy called and said to call her back in 10 minutes. There is an advertisement for that restaurant in the Yellow Pages. Jean told her sister not to forget to call their brother. Now check your work. John told his mother to call a doctor. John said to his mother, please call a doctor. Ask the operator for information. 
Lyle never asks if he can take a message. I wanted to leave a message, but Al said it wasn't necessary. Please tell Damien to use a phone card next time. Mother didn't say anything to me about a message from Betty. Judy called and said to call her back in 10 minutes. There's an advertisement for that restaurant in the Yellow Pages. Jean told her sister not to forget to call their brother. Now read the following conversation and answer the questions. Read and answer. Paul is Kathy's boyfriend. Paul wants to go to a film on Thursday night. It is the new Angelina Jolie film. She is Paul's favorite actress. Paul says, hello, is Kathy there? Angie says, no, she's not here. I am Angie. I am her cousin. I am visiting Kathy for one week. Paul says, oh, I see. Can you tell Kathy to call me when she comes home? It's important. Well, Kathy went to the hair salon. She will be back at 5. Should I say that you called? Yes, I will be at the library until 5.30. I can call her from there. I will call at 5.15. I will tell her, aren't you Kathy's boyfriend? Yes, I am. We have been together for one year. I thought so. She says you have beautiful blue eyes. I have blue eyes. We may go to a film Thursday night. Do you want to come with us? I can't. I told my aunt that I would go shopping with her. She needs a new answering machine. It's the new Angelina Jolie film. I know. Kathy told me. I prefer Brad Pitt. He's very handsome. Yes, he is. Well, thank you. Don't forget to tell Kathy I will call her at 5.15. I won't. It was nice talking to you. Bye. Now let's answer the questions. What does Paul want to do on Thursday night? Who is Paul's favorite actress? Who is Angie? What does Paul ask Angie to do? When will Kathy return? Where will Paul be at 5 o'clock? How long have Paul and Kathy been together? What color are Paul's eyes? What does Angie's aunt need? What actor does Angie like? Now let's check your answers. What does Paul want to do on Thursday night? He wants to go to a film. Who is Paul's favorite actress? Angelina Jolie is Paul's favorite actress. Who is Angie? Angie is Kathy's cousin. What does Paul ask Angie to do? He asks Angie to have Kathy call him. When will Kathy return? She will return at 5. Where will Paul be at 5? He will be in the library. How long have Paul and Kathy been together? They've been together for one year. What color are Paul's eyes? Paul's eyes are blue. What does Angie's aunt need? She needs a new answering machine. What actor does Angie like? She likes Brad Pitt. All right, very good job today. See you next time. Bye. Practicing English. Hey Angie, where have you been? I've been calling you for two hours. Is your cell phone off? No, my cell phone is on. You know, unless I'm in class. My phone is right here in my bag. Hmm. Oh no, I can't find it in my bag. Uh, keep looking. It must be in there. Oh no, it's not in there at all. 
I think I know what happened. I dropped my bag in the street by the park on my way to English time today. I thought I put everything back in. Maybe I missed picking up my phone and left it there. Well, we can go there now and see if it's still there. Yeah. I don't know how you could have lost it. That's too bad, Angie. I know you loved having your phone. Well, it's my own fault. The phone probably fell out, and I just didn't see it in the grass. Well, what will you do now? Well, I better talk to Carrie and see about a loan, and get a new phone fast. I will call her today. I hope she is home. Well, it's almost dinner time. I'll call you later. Hey, by the way, what's Carrie's phone number? I can catch you there. That's right. You don't have that. Her home phone number is two one two five two seven nine five seven zero 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 seven nine seven nine. Okay, I'll call you later. So, how was your day? My day was fine until the phone started ringing off the hook. What? I heard that you lost your phone today. How did you know that? Well, here are your messages. Alexi called and told me that he saw an ad for cell phones. Um, he can go with you after work tomorrow. His number is two one two seven eight two two one eight eight. He says to please call him back. Okay. Then, then Jack phoned. He heard about your missing phone from Alexi. And Alexi gave him my number. He said he、mm. wanted to see you tonight, and to please call or come over after dinner. His number is two one two nine zero eight six seven two three. Hmm. Okay. Then Sam phoned. He heard that you lost your cell phone today, and he also left a message. First, he said you should be more careful with your phone. Very funny. He also said his friend has an extra phone, so he will ask him if he can give it to you. He said not to buy a new one until he hears from his friend. He will call you later. He got my number from Alexi, who told him your phone had been lost. His number is two one two four three five eight nine two one. He asked you to call him when you're free. He he also wanted to know if you want Mexican or pizza、uh -huh. when you go to his house tomorrow night to watch TV. Good afternoon. This is Angie's answering service. This is her very patient friend. May I take a message? Hi, this is Alexi calling. Can I leave a message for Angie? Sure. Can you tell her that I went back one more time to the park, and I found her phone. Alexi, that is wonderful news. I have been taking messages all afternoon. I thought both of you would be very happy. Is Angie there yet? Yes, Alexi. She's right here. Thank you so much for finding her phone. I'm very happy. Hi, Alexi. Thank you for finding my phone. Carrie is even happier than I am about it. <laughs> <laughs>